that these 16 months just passed as by. I, I did not even realize how quickly the time flew. The reason for the delay is that I just completed my studies here. April went into my personal tax filing. So I will, yes, you must be surprised to know that while I was doing my master's, I also set up a small business. Uh, Hi and welcome back to another video. At the outset, I would like to thank all of my viewers for waiting so patiently for all these videos. I also want to thank all the subscribers who booked an appointment with me. I hope uh, I was able to address all your questions accordingly. The reason for the delay is that I just completed my studies here and I'm just so happy that these 16 months just passed as by. I, I did not even realize how quickly the time flew. Um, I was uh, fairly busy in April because I had to complete my final presentation towards the end of the semester. I had to submit my I had to submit my final report, and uh, then half of the April went into my personal tax filing. So I will be sharing a video very soon about you know how I ended up filing taxes not just for the year 2022 well which i was studying but also for 2021 even though i was here only for five business days only for five days uh well uh, the the last part of april kind of uh, you know went into the tax filing for a small business that i have set up yes you must be surprised to know that while i was doing my masters i also set up a small business uh, i'll discuss more about that in the coming videos This video is, uh, I think, uh, one of the very sought after videos about the proof of funds when applying for your study visa application. Now, if you're a mature student, I'm, I'm guessing that's how you ended up in this channel. If you're a mature student over the age of 35, one of the more, uh, one of the most important documents besides your statement of purpose is the proof of funds letter. Now, what exactly is a proof of funds letter? Many people think that, you know, a proof of funds letter is just a combination of your bank statements, of your fixed deposits, and maybe your um, investments. And then you just upload all of that in a combined form. And that, that should be sufficient for a proof of funds because you've already mentioned that this is the X amount of dollars that you'll be bringing in. Now, however, you have to understand that this is not a water visa officer would like the best way to present this is like an index form now think about it uh, from the visa officer or any any person um, in particular say if somebody just gave you some random documents when you were applying for a home loan application right maybe you will just 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 complete everything but the application form usually has you know okay these many funds and savings this many funds and uh, fixed deposit this is what is available right now to you so you know if if a compendium or if an index is provided that makes life so much easier if you've been following my channel and you would have seen the the statement of purpose video i have also shared that even though a statement of purpose is like a running statement you always should have the headers or headlines for the paragraph that you're talking about the reason for that is that you know if the visa officer um has kind of gotten a gist of what that paragraph contains they can always switch to the next paragraph of interest instead of you know just going through a running statement to understand what the whole application looks like the proof of funds is you know you have to show to the visa officer that you have enough money not to cover restitution expenses but your living expenses your transportation costs maybe your flight tickets and if you're leaving a family back home in your home country whether they have sufficient money to support themselves or if you're bringing them with you do you have sufficient funds to sustain a good livelihood here you know that's how you have to frame the proof of funds so that the visa officer can see that yes there are enough and more funds to sustain yourself comfortably here okay and it's a very crucial document it plays a significant role as a mature applicant in your study visa application let's not leave any stone unturned and ensure that the application is foolproof the next question that comes to mind is as to you know what all do you need to show that how much money do you need to show now uh, now that completely depends on 
which kind of program are you applying for is it a college education is it a, is it a university education is it just an eight month course or is it, or is it a you know a longer duration course are there any co-op opportunities that you are getting do you have any continuing work experience that you might be doing remotely for your current employer or you know do you, if you provide consultancy services it also depends on you know whether you would be which province would you be going to so there are some provinces which comparatively are not as expensive as ontario and british columbia so it completely depends on you know what program have you chosen what university have you chosen and which province would you be going to now how i presented was watch till the end of the video where i talk about you know what's one of the crucial points that you should not miss mentioning in your proof of funds letter and that can kind of just you know boost up more confidence in your application the part of the continent that i come from Keeping money in savings account is like, you know, is, is not considered wise, right? So most of our investments, except maybe for the liquid funds, are always parked into some sort of uh, some sort of investments. And I had a similar case. I had parked most of my investments because I had no plans to study. Most of my investments, most of my savings, my salaries and savings were parked in, um, you know, long-term investments. Like I had my share portfolio, I had my mutual fund stock portfolio, I had my insurance portfolio as well. And of course, I had some property as well. I mean, if you've been following my journey, you know that you know my idea was to first apply through Express Entry, and when they, that did not happen, I you know moved into the study permit. And at the same time, I was not very you know I was not uh, sure whether I'll be my application would be getting processed. So there was no point liquidating those investments and um, just parking them, you know, leaving them in my savings account. So when I got the admission letter from the university, I would say uh, early August is only when i you know redeemed those funds uh, equivalent to some of my you know some of my studies and then i parked that money into my savings account now that's considered a question mark as you know why where this sudden inflow of funds came in so while i started explaining my proof of funds the first and foremost thing that i wrote was that you know i am um, i'm a mature applicant and that uh, while i have been um, earning monies I have always wanted to, you know, improve my skill set, go for my higher education. And uh, for that, I have dedicatedly been saving some money for my higher education or upskilling myself separately. And some part of this was invested into this mutual fund or, you know, the stock portfolio, which I have recently liquidated for my admission and for my further education into this university. And I highlighted that, you know, this was a statement that was recently this was the money that was redeemed from my mutual fund portfolio to my bank account. So that gives a comfort to the visa officer that this money has just not, you know, flown from anywhere else. Now, had I not explained that in my, in a, in a letter, like, a, you know, a, a proof of fund letter, uh, the visa officer might have had this question Then they might have been like, okay, we don't know whether this fund was in your account for the prior three years. So that's one, that's one very important thing that you have to keep in mind when you're submitting your uh, proof of funds uh, letter so that's that's the foremost thing i also mentioned that while i'm submitting my application for study permit today i'm gainfully employed and i will continue to work till the time i join uh, the university program so say when i put in my application in august uh, my study program wouldn't have started in january and i would have like five months of payroll coming in regularly so that's also a very important thing that you know you can always mention that the next five months of salary will be getting credited in your account while you are not showing it um, here as a proof of funds but that will be something which will be available to you as your savings schedule coming back uh, to how i presented was what i did create an index um, the proof of funds had first this explanation that i have been saving regularly and you know i have recently liquidated or redeemed some part of my investment portfolio and put that into my checking account the second part was uh, the third part was a ta table uh, as i mentioned that it's much much easier for somebody to look at a table than to you know read a running text so as you can see here is what i showed i was working then in singapore and i had my savings in uh, my singapore bank account 
and and then of course I had savings uh, in fixed deposits. Then I also had some money back in India. There was my Indian bank accounts, and then there were my Indian fixed deposits as well. Apart from that, I had my investments in HDFC Securities and Zeroda, and these were my stock portfolio, my mutual fund portfolios which I was holding with them. I also had an interactive brokers account uh, where I held my international portfolio. So while I wanted to show my liquid funds, which were like you know readily available. I I mentioned that these are fixed deposits, uh, but they are available within a one day's notice. That I can I can break these fixed deposits and redeem them at a and liquidate them at a one month's notice. The second part of you know the asset side I showed was my investments and not liquid liquid investments per se. So that's where you know I showed that these are all in. Uh, Mutual funds are I hold stocks of uh, large cap mutual fund companies, and uh, these can be liquidated if required in two to three business days time. But at the same time, I also mention that you know while uh, these are blue chip stocks, these uh, they should not be considered at the face value, and their market value at the time of redemption would be dependent on what the market scenario at that point in time is. It was around COVID era when you know the Indian markets were moving, so my portfolio had a sizable chunk. Uh, you know, just to ensure that my application is stronger, so um, my parents had uh, some fixed deposits in their names. Of course, they are senior citizens, and um, well, you know, what they had done was they had instead of making us nominees they they made us as a joint account holder in those fixed deposits so i also mentioned that you know while my parent is the first holder in these fixed deposits if required she'll be more than happy to you know give me these monies uh, if if it's required so i can also share a template with you it's a, it's a very simple letter which says that you know while these are held in joint names and if required i am happy to support my daughter in her expenses in Canada, so these were the asset sides of uh, my investments. Now, coming um, on the liabilities side, I mentioned my tuition expense for the first year, my tuition expense for the second year, the living expenses for me and my daughter. This number keeps on changing, and IRCC updates it on their website. So the best would be that you know you can just pick it up from there and uh, use that number depending upon how many family members are you planning to bring in if you are not bringing in your family members right now you uh, and if you're planning to leave the family back home if you have a working spouse you can just you know separately mention in a paragraph that you know your while your spouse is working the household expenses in india will be taken care of by by your spouse and um, i don't think so that you know you have to give any expenses as to how much are you and what is your expenditure back in your home country you do not have to justify that you just have to justify as to if you are moving to canada if you are moving with your family what will be your expenses here would you be able to afford the lifestyle here i did not mention that i will be um, doing a uh, doing a part time job uh, which of course every student does and which the visa officer very well knows that uh, most of the students that come here they are allowed to work up to 20 hours per week and the person would be working and they are able to sustain a, a reasonable lifestyle that's the reason why it's called a minimum wage so i did not mention that but uh, just showing these proof of funds i guess were were good enough for uh, for the application and um, as i mentioned earlier i think you know what you really have to mention that while i'm submitting my application today these funds i will be gainfully employed for till the time i i move to canada and i will be adding those many funds to my uh, to my savings kitty as well to that effect i uh, close the proof of uh, funds line stating that uh, this is what i earn monthly and this is completely to be you know now it will keep on adding to my savings account which I will transfer to my Canadian bank account. Now, a few things that have to be kept in mind is that I, as I mentioned, that I had, I, I was in Singapore, so I could not apply through an SDS stream. I had applied through a non-SDS stream and I did not have to submit a one-year fee or submit a GIC, which typically is required. However, if you're submitting a GIC, do remember to mention that. Uh, I also forgot to mention that, you know, if you've paid any tuition fee deposit, because, you know, when you and get a letter of acceptance when you get a letter of admission from the university you have to typically face some twenty five hundred dollars fee to you know to to reserve your spot in that university so do mention that because it's a part of your tuition fee which gets adjusted later with the rest of the money that you'll be paying so um yeah you, you mentioned that in your asset side as well 
so i think there you have it folks so i hope you know drafting the proof of funds should be easier when you look at it uh, uh, what followed this one page of document was an index wherein I mentioned that, you know, these are the line wise item that I'm mentioning. Um, now, if you have a rental property back home, do mention that, you know, this is the kind of rental income that while you'll be away, you will be, your house will be earning this much uh, rent. The idea is to show that, yes, you have more than uh, sufficient funds for you to complete your studies, support your family or support a sustainable livelihood here in Canada while you'll be away from your full-time work so just just make sure to follow these tips and guidelines and i'll be more than happy to help you if you have any further questions feel free to book the free consultations sessions with me i'm more than happy and i'm sure the people who have already booked these sessions with me were happy with the outcome and i hope this video was helpful in framing your proof of funds letter and uh, i wish you all the best in your application thank you